If I told you about a fish that reaches 15 to 20 pounds, viciously attacks top waters, fights like the devil, and swims in big schools just off the beach, how far would you be willing to travel to target them? Fortunately for fishermen in the Northeast, you don't have to travel very far to catch one of our most savage species, the bluefish. With the Massachusetts surf season still a few weeks away, Chris Meegan and I traveled south to New Jersey, where, according to recent reports, the blues had arrived in force. We met up with some good friends, stopped by the tackle shops for last minute lures and coffee, and drove on to New Jersey's most pristine stretch of coastline, Island Beach State Park. I'm fortunate enough to live in Ocean County. I live 10 minutes from the ocean and about 15, 20 minutes to Island Beach State Park. I call it a fisherman's paradise. The scenery is awesome. You've got sand dunes, it's all natural. It's a natural barrier, which is rare along the New Jersey coastline. There's not a lot of places like this. Years ago, our whole coastline kind of looked like this to a degree and then it got developed. We began our day at the southernmost part of the park, on the jetty that borders Barnegat Bay. With ocean temperatures still on the cold side, the bluefish had been running the inlet in search of warmer water and big schools of bait fish. So here we are guys down on Island Beach State Park in New Jersey, a little oasis in the middle of the, I'd say a little bit northern Jersey as far as the shore goes. Fishing with Shell Karras, Jimmy Fee, and just a host of the personalities down here on the Jersey Shore. Some really good guys. JM's with us today, Little Sal. Scotty Lex, he's a story unto himself. You get an opportunity to meet some of these characters during the course of the day. What, what inlet is this doing? This is Barnicket Inlet. Okay, that's what and I'm we're just... on the North Jetty. You got the Barnicket Lighthouse there on the south side. That's Long Beach Island. We're on the north end of Barnegat Inlet. We got a pretty good, what do you got, a four knot current coming through here? Anyways. Right around there and uh, maybe even a little quicker. Uh, yeah, I was going to say it's. It's uh, incoming water and it's going to take three hours for it to change the direction. Even though the tide will be dropping now because high tide out front was at seven o'clock. So as time will go on, you'll see it'll be lower in, in height. It'll still be running in an inward motion. And then around three hours, then it will start running the opposite. It'll slack for a short period of time and then go the opposite way. So even though it's the tide itself is dumping, it's still coming in. Or it, right. it looks so appear to be dumping. Right. So where's it's, it emptying from? It's still in here. It's the volume of the water that's in the bay. It takes okay. that long for it to start going the opposite way. Fish in this area, we got three different opportunities. We have the beach itself out front, where it's all sandy pockets all the way down. We have the inlet where we're fishing right now, and you have the, actually have the estuaries out behind us, which we uh, hopefully will get on as this tide starts dumping. Oh, oh, Jimmy, on cue, on cue. Or it might have been the bottom. Could have been the bottom, might have been. Oh, that is not there's the that, bottom. There's that bottom again. I coaxed him up. I'll tell you, I taught him well. <laughs> Once we got him off Shell's Rock, he started to turn it on. You're, really? You know? I noticed that. It's that brown rock. <laughs> So one of the things I love about coming down and fishing in here, it just seems like everybody's got a nickname. It's a lot you of know, fun. The abuse is free, Chris. <laughs> you know? Somebody was saying, and I don't know if it was Scotty oh. Lax, on cue, boys, on cue. Scotty Lax. Oh, you get out there, Chris. What was he calling you? Puffy. Puffy. <laughs> Jimmy put on a little bit of winter weight. I heard one of the guys say flapjack. I didn't think that was going to stick. <laughs> oh, never mind. Oh, good. Now okay. you can take this one off no, for me. Jimmy, get out there. <laughs> oh, I landed. There we go. I think I might have come in on Shell's Rock. 
Look at the size of that slug. Look at the length of that fish. Beautiful blue fish. There it is, boys. There it is. All right, Chris. We are not so far. During that, that major part of the rip, you can see that on the inside of that slick. This guy might be a little smaller a fish. He is just tap, 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 and tap, tap. Bring it to Jimmy. I got this one. Jimmy, yeah. you got him? He's a little cool, but he was a little rat following him up. That's all right. Somebody's got, got to get the little ones out of the way, Chris. Yeah. So this is called culling. Now, if that was up by us right now, you'd be a really nice bluefish. It's a pretty typical bluefish we'd see out of the surf, uh, you know, up on the Cape right now in South Cape South Beach. South Cape Beach, here you go. But down here, this is one of the smaller ones we've seen today. I got one this size, too, so I'm not picking on you. <laughs> Still a Beautiful great fish. fish right now, but you can tell the bite's picking up. Guys are starting to move in. We got a gorgeous day here in uh, early spring down on Island Beach State Park. Jimmy, let's get that guy back in the water, see if we can make a few more casts, tie into a big slob. Line bottom. Thought I had the biggest blue today, and I actually had the bottom. So we're retying here. But how will the conditions change? Right now, I know Scotty was fishing on the surface, wasn't doing anything. He's fishing down low. How will the conditions change during the course of the day? It'll probably still stay on the bottom, but you could switch to lighter bucktails because the tide won't be moving yeah. as fast. And that's, you know, that determines you know what weight you want to use. Typically, one ounce to three ounces is the norm. This the sweet spot. We're right. we're a little heavier right now. We're right on the now, three side. I would say minimum of two. Yeah. And then three if if needed. And I know that the fishing in the estuaries, so last week you guys were crushing them back here, right? We're going to try that a little later on, and hopefully that we're going to find those no, fish again. We're not going to be on the bucktails then, or are we no, going to change it up? Top water. Top water, which is yeah. really cool when the, yeah. when the blue fish cooperate that. and you start getting them on the top like that. See it? The bird play. play out there, boys. We're in the pocket. We're in the side. Jimmy just swung All right, Jimmy Jimmy swung How much weight do you have there, Jimmy? Uh, oh, I just swung. Come on, there, there he is, Jimmy. Oh, snap. That just happened, Jim. The fish are coming through in waves. <laughs> fish are coming through in waves. And when Scotty hooks up, you know they're thick. So, uh, but Chris, he's hooked up. I'm hooked up. We've got Scotty Lex hooked up. Jimmy, where, are we back over? Who am I over? That's you. No, no you're no, good. No, that's you're Lex good. is over me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a gator. I got a gator, too. Three gators in a row, guys. Look at this, huh? Triples. Let's bring them up together, boys. Look Sweet. at this. <laughs> Look at the gator. <laughs> Beautiful fish, guys. Fishing Island Beach State Park. We got the crew with us today. Fun, fun time. Isn't awesome. that unbelievable? Let's get these things popped. Yeah. <laughs> 36. <laughs> <laughs> Look how skinny, man. In a couple weeks, that's a 15 pound night, fish. Last night they were eating bunker, they're this big. <laughs> You're on my rock. <laughs> so out here, when you fish with shell carrots, everybody has their own rock. Jimmy just stepped on his, which is a complete show of disrespect for somebody who's been fishing these rocks for 40 plus years. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and move Jimmy back to his rock. Well, he actually doesn't have one. He hasn't been here long enough. Shell, do you see that a lot down here? Disrespect like that from some of the young bucks? A absolutely, you know, out of staters. That's what it is, you know. Sure, he's fished the Jersey Shore a little bit, but Start walking another man's rock. No, you don't do that. Jesus. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Oh, 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 look at the fake you. setup on that rock. <laughs> right on the bottom, barely even. Look at that. Jimmy down low, huh? Just not even moving. It's just like tumbling along the bottom. It's a little bit smaller, seeing a mix of sizes. Oh, right on the bottom. Good 
it's a little smaller than yeah. typically. Yeah. Good eating size, though. Definitely want to handle them with care. You don't want to get your fingers too close to that mouth. A okay, four or five pounder. There we go. Now that looks a little better than the one I just had on. Shell, so when does the uh, bluefish run typically start down on around Island Beach? Uh, Mid-April. They usually uh, come in up uh, towards the Raritan. Uh, Leonardo's a good spot, Sandy Hook area. And then uh, they start coming in here you know, right around that same period. They'll come through the inlet, they'll have a bite, and then it's usually in the bay. And then they start spreading around. Sal's on. There it is, boys. The, the boss is in. Boy, I tell you what, Jimmy, that changed big time by putting on a little bit more weight. Shell gave me a little bit more weight, got me down the bottom. Seems like these fish are just sitting on the bottom. I was literally letting it bounce along the bottom and it just hooked up. Shell, want me to run down and get them? Yeah, if you don't mind. Not at all. I need a, I need a caddy. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You got these fish that are cruising through here, big blue fish with the occasional bass mixed in, just eating violently. How soon will he start to fatten up? Uh, once those bunkers show up, he'll fill out in one day. <laughs> and just like that, everybody hooks up, hooks up on the jetty. Not much has happened, and then four guys just... This guy's not even a big slob, but... Sal and uh, Jim were telling me they're all on the bottom, so put a little bit more lead weight on there. Bucktail dropped it along the bottom. Those things will fill out in what, another month? Shell said in one day. He said as soon as they find a school bunker, you'll see him fatten up. Oh, yeah. So we're just gonna put him right back. All right, Jimmy, thank you. I know we're starting to get these fish up by us, but these are big sled dog blues. They're so much fun. Yeah, we don't see these, you know, we'll see four or five, six pound blue fish up by us pretty consistently from the surf. But to get fish that could be 15, 18 pounds, like I'm hoping we're gonna get a shot at later, that's something we don't see up on, on the cave. The bottom, barely even. We got the crew with us today. There's like three access areas for the bay side. These are the, the, the points where you could assess it from. And 21 is a, a, a spot where it could be small canoes and kayakers will go there. And then area 15 is another location. And then uh, area seven, these are all spots that you can walk through and not you know, disturb any of the habitat. As the tide slowed, so did the fishing. Shell said it was time to leave the jetty and check the calm backwaters behind Island Beach where he thought some of the inlet bluefish might have moved. This is area 21, one of the access areas for the bay side. On the outgoing tide, the water in here will be a little bit warmer and that kind of triggers a bite. It's great with a fly rod, great with light tackle, but with these big uh, bluefish around, guys are beefed it up a little bit and we're throwing lures that are two ounces and three ounces. Here's that release. Get to get his, he's got some surface coming in. Watch this. Bay bluefish bite was intense, but short-lived. Small packs of blues were hunting in four feet of water, 
and we managed to catch a few before the fish moved on and it was time to break for lunch. By the early afternoon, northeast winds had kicked up the surf. Scotty and JM left lunch early to see if the building onshore winds had pushed bluefish onto the beach. So Shelly, we uh, had a great morning, grabbed a bite to eat, changed up some of the gear, shooting down to a now out front. What are we going to be doing? Uh, we're going to try to hit one of these sandbars, and uh, we've got two buddies out there right now, Scotty Lex and uh, JM and they're throwing metal. Got a little bit of a surf, but it looks like he's fighting a fish right now. Oh yeah, he is, he's tight. Yeah, we might want to fish here. Yeah, I would agree with you there. Boy, this looks gorgeous out here. So let's change it up. We're gonna throw metal now? I would throw metal, and uh, I think that'll be the ticket. All right. There's nothing like good fishing in rough surf. With the waves battering us, we punched our plugs through the wind to the big bluefish hunting at the edge of the whitewater. Right at the edge of the white water. Shell's on, Sal's on, I'm on. He's got a slot. You should see that fish. <laughs> Look at the gator head. Look at the size of that, Jimmy. <laughs> Shell going with the monster. I know it's a thing. As soon as you start working, you see one on it. Yeah. And then when you get halfway back, you might as well rip it. Coming for it. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> I love it. There we go. When we were in the inlet this morning, we stuck with bucktail jigs. That's what we were getting most of our fish on. And then out here in the surf, they've been on metals and they've been on pencil poppers. We've got a much bigger, we deal with a much rougher water out here. And casting distance seems to be uh, pretty important to get hit. So we're using long casting metals, long casting pencil poppers. JM just hooked up again. Sal just missed one. It's, uh, they're definitely coming through. Just like in the inlet this morning, they're coming through in waves. So we'll go 10 minutes without anything. And the guys are doubling up. Shell's on too. Oh. I'll throw that on this one. He said let it sink. They're on the bottom. It's 
So these fish are coming up right now. <laughs> They're at the very end of your cast. We got pencils. As soon as it hits, Jimmy pointed out, slow it down a little bit. Give it the action, but slow it down. As soon as it hits, these fish are coming up and they're really, really aggressive right at the end of your cast in the face of the wave. So we're gonna see if we can hook up right here. Great surf fishing. Jersey Shore offers up some of the best shore fishing. We literally have the beach to ourselves, as Jimmy pointed out, it's three of us. It's Shell, myself, Jimmy. For as far as you can see to the south and as far as you can see to the north. Boy, it's funny, Shell, how the conditions change from when we first got here, it was bright sunshine and it was all metal. Then all of a sudden the clouds came in and you took out the popper, and that seemed to make all the difference. The yellow seems to be the color. Oh. That is a big fish. That's bigger than your other one. Yeah, it is. That right there is why you come down here and fish the Jersey Shore. Just a beautiful fish, top water pencil. Gorgeous fish, guys. Let's see if we can get this guy released back in the water. Jimmy, get over here for us. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys, we're watching Chris <laughs> Megan, Jimmy V, Angling Adventures. You just saw he lays that Kubla Khan go pretty quick. It's a big fish. That's a gorgeous fish right there. Look at the tail on that. Hey, guys, thanks for tuning in to today's Angling Adventure. Jimmy Fee, Chris Megan, Shell Karras. Fishing Island Beach State Park. This guy's got a little blood. We're gonna get him back in the water. He's ready to go. Well, I love how they take off. Like a scolded cat. Awesome, Jimmy. Watch it. Oh. And I wreck a great shot by taking a plug to the bait. <laughs> yeah. We stayed on the bite until the rising tide pushed us back to the beach and out of range of the big blues. After a day of great fishing with good friends, Chris and I said our farewells and headed back to Massachusetts, where soon enough, Bluefish would return to our own beaches, and we would continue to catch this savage, unappreciated game fish.